Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're going to be going over the best pole arms. And so there are three different categories that I've uh, found distinctive categories for pole arms in this game. And they are couched lances, pole arms, which are like weapons that you would swing as opposed to stabbing, even though many of them can also be used to stab. And finally, pikes, which are longer weapons that can be braced against the ground and are best for uh, stopping cavalry charges. And so we're going to be going through the 10 best ones for each category. We'll do couched lances, first, then pole arms, then braced spears, otherwise known as pikes. And so uh, the ratings for these, how I got all of these rankings, it's a number of factors, including the speed at which they can be used, the damage they do, the length that they are, and their handling. So obviously you want it to be as long as possible while maintaining speed and high handling, and then obviously the more damage it does, the better. So Let's just start it off with couched lances. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each weapon because I want to be able to move through all 30 of these weapons relatively fast. So uh, let's start at number 10 for couched lances. So at number 10 for couched lances, we have the first variation of the sparring lance. Uh, this one can be found, I guess, anywhere on the map. I had to use console commands to find it because I could only find the other variation of sparring lances. Uh, but according to the online sources that I reference, it can be found anywhere. So as far as stats on this one, uh, well, I guess as far as abilities, you you can see that it can be couched, it can also be braced, and used two or one-handed. So the sparring lance, both varieties, can be used any way that you can use the spear. As far as stats on this one go, we have a weight of two, it's a tier two weapon, thrust speed of 82, thrust damage of 26, length of 194, handling of 59. So uh, that's it. I'm not going to give personal opinions about weapons in this video, I'm just going to fly through them because we have 30 of them to cover. So the number 10 best couch lance in the game is this variety of sparring lance. At number nine for couch lances, we have the other variety variety of sparring lance. So this one uh, cannot be braced like the other one can, but it can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched. Uh, has a weight of two, weapon tier of two, thrust speed of 83, thrust damage of 25, length of 179, and handling of 63. Uh, so slightly different from the last one, but pretty similar across the board. It is a sparring lance, so there are a lot better weapons to use in the game than this one. At number eight, we have the light lance. And now this one, again, can be used anyway, one-handed, two-handed, couched, or braced. Uh, we have a weight of two 2.1, weapon tier 2, it has a thrust speed of 80, thrust damage of 29, length of 208, and handling of 57. At number 7, we have the Heavy Knight Lance. This one can most often be found in Vlandia. It can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched, has a weight of 2.2 kilograms, it's a tier 4 weapon, thrust speed of 81, thrust damage of 39, length of 198, so quite long, and a handling of 62. At number 6, we have the Heavy Cavalry Lance, one that can be most often found in Vlandia or the Empire, uh, but also sometimes times Kuzate or Azerai territory. As far as the uh, stuff for this one, we, it can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched. Has a weight of 1.9. It's a tier 3 weapon. Has a thrust speed of 83, thrust damage of 34, length of 193, and handling of 64. At number 5, we have the Mamluk Lance, one that can most often be found in the Azerai territory. Uh, this one can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched. Has a weight of 1.9. It is a tier 3 weapon. Thrust speed of 85, thrust damage of 36, length of 170, and handling of 60. Ha! Giggity! At number four, we have the Night Lance, which can be most often found in Vlandian territory. This one can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched. Has a weight of 2.0, a weapon tier of 3, thrust speed of 83, thrust damage of 37, length of 184, and handling of 64. At number three, we have the Heavy Druznik Lance, and now this one can be found most frequently in Sturgeon territory. It can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched. Has a weight of 2.2 kilograms. It's a tier four weapon, thrust speed of 82, thrust damage of 40, length of 197 and handling of 63. At number two, we have the regular Druznik Lance, which can also be found most commonly in Sturgeon territory. Uh, this one can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couched, has a weight of 1.9, is a th uh, tier three weapon, has a thrust speed of 85, thrust damage of 36, length of 171, and handling of 71. Finally, at number one for couched lances, we have the Noble Cavalry Lance. And now this one can be most often found, I found either in Vlandia or the Kuzate territory, and the third most common place is uh, the Empire, so it kind of makes sense. It's that stretch right in between, and it is the best uh, lance that you can couch in this game. It can be used one-handed, two-handed, or couch. It has a weight of 1.9, it's a tier 4 weapon, has a thrust speed of 83, thrust damage of 39, length of 200, so nice and long, and a handling of 63. All in all, like I said, it is the best lance that you can couch in Bannerlord, so if you want to focus on being a lancer in this game, 
I definitely recommend trying to get your hands on the Noble Cavalry Lance. But that's it for our top 10 couch lances. Now let's move on to pole arms or uh, spears that you can swing, as people like to call them. The ones that you're not thrusting with, but swinging. Is he gonna say giggity? Should I say giggity? Are other people allowed to say giggity? Giggity. At number 10 for these weapons, we have the pole sword. And this one is uh, a pretty common weapon. You can find it pretty much all over the map. Most often, though, I find it in the Azerai territory. Uh, it can be used one-handed or two-handed, so you can't couch this one or brace it. it has a weight of 2.5. It's a tier 6 weapon. has a swing speed of 17. Swing damage of 11, so pretty low, even though you can swing it. It's not ridiculously high. Thrust speed of 79 and thrust damage of 24. Length of 202 and handling of 60. So, like all of the pole arms in this game, I find them to be a little bit underwhelming on foot. I don't like using them when I'm on foot. But if you're mounted, they make a pretty good weapon for doing wide sweeping attacks as you ride by your enemies. Uh, oftentimes killing multiple enemies, especially if they're lower quality, lower tier, you know, not very heavily armored. But the pole sword takes the number 10 spot. At number 9 for pole arms, we have the Volg. And this one is a Vlandian weapon, so you're going to find it most often in Vlandia. Uh, it can be used one-handed or two-handed. It has a weight of 1.5. It's a tier 6 weapon. Swing speed of 32 swing damage of 35, thrust speed of 87, thrust damage of 36, length of 143, and handling of 66. At number 8, we have the Long Glaive, and now this one is going to be most commonly found in the Kuzate territory. It can be used one-handed or two-handed, has a weight of 1.4, it's a tier 6 weapon, swing speed of 24, swing damage of 22, thrust speed of 87, thrust damage of 34, length of 206, and handling of 64. At number 7, we've got an interesting one on this list, the Scythe. Now, this one can be found all over the map, but most often I find it in the Empire. Uh, it has a weight of 2.7 kilograms. It is a tier 1 weapon, swing speed of 78, swing damage of 59, length of 96, and handling of 66. So, not the best weapon in the game, but considering uh, the relatively high damage, it actually is pretty fun to use on horseback. Uh, so yeah, the Scythe takes the number 7 spot for pole arms, at least swinging pole arms in this game. Then at number 6, we have the Standard Glaive, and again, this is a Kuzate weapon, so you're going to most often find it in Kuzate territory. It can be used one-handed or two-handed, has a weight of 2.0, it's a tier 6 weapon, swing speed of, six, uh, of 42, swing damage of 39, thrust speed of 84, thrust damage of 25, uh, length of 149, and handling of 72. At number 5, right in the middle, we have the Sparring Glaive, which again is going to be most commonly found in Kuzate territory. This one has a, uh, it can be used one-handed or two-handed, has a weight of 2.0, it's a tier 6 weapon, swing speed of 43, swing damage of 36, and that's blunt, as will be the thrust, thrust speed of 84, and thrust damage of 23, length of 145, and handling of 73. Next up at number 4, we've got a lot of people's favorite polearm or swinging weapon uh, for horseback, the War Razor. This one has, uh, it's two-handed or spear brace, so you can't use it one-handed, uh, you have to do two-handed, but it can also be braced. Uh, it has a weight of 1.8, weapon tier of 6, swing speed of 62, swing damage of 155, thrust speed of 90, thrust damage of 41, length of 205, so quite long, and handling of 52. If you want to find this one, I find it most frequently in Batania, but I've seen it in Sturgia, the Empire, and Vlandia to lesser extents. But if you want to find this one, I recommend checking Batania. Uh, so that is the War Razor, which takes the number four spot for pole arms. At number three, we have the Sparring Billhook, and this one can be most frequently found in Batania or Vlandia. It is, of course, a billhook, thus the name, and it can be used two-handed. It has a weight of 1.7, it's a tier five weapon, has a swing speed of 86, swing damage of 95, and that's blunt damage, so great for knocking people out, length of 138, and handling of 70. At number 2 for swinging pole arms, we have the Bill Hook, and this one has a weight of 1.7, weapon tier 5, swing speed of 86, swing damage of 105, length of 138, and handling of 70. So everything that the sparring Bill Hook does, the regular Bill Hook does better, except for obviously, this one doesn't take as many prisoners because it deals 105 cut, so you're going to kill more people with it. Uh, that being said, excellent pole arm. And finally, at number one for the best swing and pole arms in the game, we have the Ramphaya. Uh, this one is primarily a Kuzate weapon, so I find it most often there, but I've seen it in Azerai and Vlandian territory as well, and I think I even found it in Batania once. Uh, that being said, if you want to 
find it. I find most frequently you can find it in the Kuzate territory. That being said, it has the best stats for any polearm in the game. It's got a weight of 1.2. It's a tier 6 weapon. Swing speed of 76. Swing damage of 141. Length of 203 and handling of 66. So if you want to ride on horseback and use a swinging polearm, you really can't beat the Ramphaya. Swing damage of 141 is one of the best damages overall for any weapon in the game. And uh, this one is quite good and it's not slow and it doesn't handle poorly and it's super long. So that's number one for swing and pole arms. Let's move on to the final category in this uh, in this video. That's braced spears or pikes. So these are going to be infantry weapons that you use against cavalry. I mean, you could use them on horseback as well, but where they really flourish is on the ground being braced to, to stop a cavalry charge. And so number 10 for the best pikes in the game is the reinforced highland spear. This is one that can be used uh, basically any way. You can use it one-handed, two-handed, you can couch it, or you can use it as a spear brace. So pretty solid across the board there. If you want to find this one, look in Batania. It's going to most commonly be there. Has a weight of 2.5. It's a tier 2 weapon. Thrust speed of 76. Thrust damage of 26. Length of 223. And handling of 50. At number 9 for pikes, we have the Wide Leaf Spear. This one I find pretty commonly in a lot of areas of the map. Namely, the Kuzate territory, the Empire, and then Batania and Sturgia to a lesser extent. But it is a pretty common weapon, so you'll probably find it just kind of all over the place. It can be used one-handed, two-handed, or it can be braced, has a weight of two. Uh, it's a tier three weapon, thrust speed of 79, thrust damage of 32, length of 222, and handling of 52. At number eight, we have the triangular headed spear. This one is very common in Vlandian territory, but I've also found it a lot in the Empire. Uh, it can be used one-handed, two-handed, or braced, has a weight of 1.8. It is a tier two weapon with a thrust speed of 82 and a thrust damage of 27, length of 190, and handling of 58 pretty solid weapon. I definitely enjoy this one. And like I said, it takes the number eight spot. At number seven, we have the steel tipped hooked spear. This one can be used one handed, two handed or braced Has a weight of 2.0. It's a tier three weapon with a thrust speed of 79 and a thrust damage of 31 length of 234. So quite long with a handling of 52. If you want to find this one, I find it pretty frequently in a lot of your Western countries. So Sturgia, Vlandia, Batania, but I've seen it elsewhere as well. So that is number seven, the steel tipped hooked spear. Let's move on to number six. At number six, we have the Fine Steel Hewing Spear. This one is another one that I find kind of all over the map, most commonly over in the Kuzate area and the Azerai territory. So one-handed, two-handed, or braced has a weight of 1.9. It's a tier four weapon, thrust speed of 81, thrust damage of 37, length of 216, and handling of 55. At number five, kind of taking our middle spot, we have the Standard Pike, and this one can be uh, used two-handed or braced. It has a weight of 3.2, uh, and I should say this one cannot be used on horseback. has a weight of 3.2, Two, weapon tier of 4, thrust speed of 79, thrust damage of 42, length of 299, so very long, and a handling of 40. This one is a kind of a common weapon, so you can really find it all over the map, but I find it most often in the Empire. Very solid weapon if you want to stop a cavalry charge, and it's nice and long, so it's hard for the cavalry to outreach you when you're using the pike. So like I said, that takes the number 5 spot. At number 4, we have the Fine Pike, which again is going to be pretty common. You find it all over the place. I find it most frequently probably still in the Empire though. It can be used two-handed or braced. It cannot be used on horseback. Has a weight of 2.8 kilograms. It's a tier 3 weapon with a thrust speed of 83, thrust damage of 43, length of 222, so quite long, and a handling of 45. Excellent weapon overall. I really like it. At number three for a braced spears and or otherwise known as pikes, we have the Courser Lance. Now this one can be used on horseback. It can be used two-handed or uh, as a spear brace. Uh, it has a weight of 2.2. It's a tier 3 weapon with a a thrust speed of 86 and a thrust damage of 40, length of 225 and handling of 48. So just averaging out an excellent weapon overall. And unlike a lot of pikes, it can be used on horseback. So, you know, that's going to be important to a lot of people. So that's the Corsa Lance, which takes the number three spot. At number two, we have the Thamaskeen Pike. And now this one is pretty common across the board, but most often you'll find this in high tier armies coming out of either Vlandia or the Empire. And so this one cannot be used on horseback. Uh, it has, you can spear brace it. It can be used two-handed, has a weight of 2.8, it's a tier 3 weapon, has a thrust speed of 83, thrust damage of 41, length of 240, and handling of 45. And of course, at number one for the best uh, spear in the game that you can brace and use to stop any incoming charging cavalry attack, we have the Cataphract Lance. This one has the advantage that you can use it on horseback, it can be used two-handed or braced, has a weight of 2.0, it is a tier 4 weapon, with a thrust speed of 88, thrust damage of 42, a length of 246, and a handling of 51. So just all in all, the best uh, 
braceable pike in the game. But also, like I said, can be used as a lance. So that again, if you're looking for any type of spear or polearm in the game, if you want the best of any of them, the best couched lance in the game is the Noble Cavalry Lance. The best polearm, so one used for swinging, is the Ramphaya. And the best pike is the Cataphract Lance. And if you want any of those, the Cataphract Lance can most often be found in the Empire or in the Azerite territory. The Ramphaya, so the best polearm, can be found in the Kuzet territory. And for the best lance, the Noble Cavalry Lance, you can find it in Flandia, the Kuzet territory, or the Empire. So I hope this video was useful. If you were trying to up your spear game in Mountain Blade Bannerlord, I hope you were able to with the help of this video. But that's all for today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.